What is up you guys? My name is Noah and this is Tech New and welcome to this unbox therapy-esque setup that I have here today. It's really inconvenient. I'm kind of trapped in the back of my room because I had to like move my desk. If you've seen my setup video, you know uh, where I am right now. It's kind of awkward, but the reason why I had this set up like this is because I'm going to be reviewing uh, a keyboard for the first time uh, and this keyboard is the Dravo 84 key grammar. 10 keyless keyboard. I probably botched the name, but it's something along the lines of what I just said. Uh, and this is my first mechanical keyboard or mechanical keyboard. This is a cheaper uh, alternative to something more expensive. And uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the design and build quality of this keyboard, my typing experience with this keyboard. Uh, and I'm also going to compare this keyboard to my previous keyboard. Wow, I'm saying keyboard so much. Um, I'm going to compare this keyboard to my previous uh, gaming keyboard. It's a very popular membrane keyboard. It's like the seventh time. And then I'm going to give you my final thoughts on the product. So before you watch this video, two disclaimers. Number one, I'm not a keyboard expert. This is my first real mechanical style keyboard. And number two, as you can see, this is a long detailed review. I wanted to get really into the nitty gritty on this keyboard. I wanted to tell you as much as I could say about it. I really wanted to be thorough. So if you don't want to sit through that, please, please, I encourage you to skip around. I mean, who doesn't? So with that said, uh, let's return to the video. Without further ado, let's begin. So first up, let's talk about design and build quality. Um, this doesn't feel cheap, but it doesn't feel premium. Uh, it's adequate. The design is adequate. That's all I can really say about it. Um, it's mostly plastic. There is an aluminum plate on the inside if you lift this kind of like barrier, buffer, I don't know what to call it. It's plastic. Uh, you can lift that up. I'll probably show you that in B-roll and you can get a different look with this keyboard, but yeah. Um, it's mostly plastic. The only metal component in this keyboard is the uh, aluminum backplate within it, which really gives it structural rigidity and makes it feel very, you know, rigid and not doesn't feel like it's going to snap on you. Um, so it feels sturdy. It doesn't feel cheap, but then again, it doesn't feel, you know, very premium. It doesn't feel bad by any means. It just doesn't feel like premium, like something like an Apple keyboard or a Corsair K70. Um, so if, like I said, if there's a gradient of quality. Uh, and this is cheap, like the worst keyboard on the planet. And then there's like something like made out of gold, you know, it's probably like smack them in the middle, maybe a little closer to the higher quality keyboards, but um, it's, you know, like I said, adequate, it's meh, it's decent. And uh, before I forget to mention, Dravel does include this very nice braided cable with this product. Uh, it looks very nice, I think, and just kind of screams quality for a keyboard uh, in this price range. So kudos to them for including this. Um, so if you're looking for a very uh, premium feeling keyboard, this isn't what you want. So really uh, with this keyboard, you're paying for the switches that come in it and uh, the backlighting, which I'm going to talk about now. The backlighting is great. It's really great. Um, it's very well lit and even here. Let me show you. I'll probably show you in B-roll, but regardless, um, it's very nicely lit. They did not skimp out at all. Uh, with the let back lighting within this you get a lot of options uh, with this keyboard you can uh, Change the brightness setting. There are several different effects you can set There is a breathing mode you can set where the keyboard will kind of like breathe or like get brighter and darker Which I really like and you can also set uh, up to five profiles or configurations where you can where you get to choose which keys you want to be lit up Thank God that's recording Whew. So yeah, the backlighting is a very nice feature to this keyboard and uh, the MX blue style switches in here are great, but I'm not gonna really talk about them because that's more of my typing experience uh, with this keyboard. So overall, I give this keyboard a B or a B plus in design. It's better than average, which I would say is a C or a C plus, um, but it's definitely not, you know, an A or an A minus or an A plus. It's like I said, decent. Next, let's talk about my typing experience with this keyboard. So the MX Blue switches in here uh, are the first real mechanical switches that I've really used. Sure, I went to Micro Center and tried out different keyboards, but um, this is the first mechanical keyboard that I've had a long duration of time to kind of test and use. And I've been using this keyboard for around a month, and I really have to say the MX Blue switches in here, or the MX Blue style switches in here, 
are great. Uh, they make typing a very fun experience. Um, you know, it's not as tedious and boring as it would be. Uh, the tactileness, the clickiness, the sound, just the whole MX Blue thing just makes typing a whole different experience in comparison to, you know, a MacBook keyboard or um, my previous membrane keyboard. So, you know, that's something great. Of course, this keyboard comes in three other key uh, switch variants. It comes in blacks, uh, reds, and browns. So keep that in mind. But um, MX Blues are pretty popular. So uh, yeah, I, I would recommend them if you really like typing. Uh, and this keyboard itself is really designed for typist type people. So um, overall, the typing experience is pretty good. Uh, for a keyboard of this price. And uh, for the sake of this review, I'm going to do a typing test really quick. Let me just pull up typeeraser.com and start a screen recording. Let's see how well I can do. <laughs> and the reason I'm doing this is because I want you to kind of get more of a feel or a look of what actual typing looks like, you know, not in B-roll, because I can't really, you know, show you what it's like unless I just do some testing in front of you, so. I'm going to record using my iPhone, sorry um, for the terrible 720p quality. Um, okay, that's recording. So I'm going to do a practice test and uh, let's see how good I do in three, two, okay. Lord. Mm. Oh, come on, come on. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, I type right around 55-ish words per minute on average. That was kind of quick for me, and yeah, my accuracy is meh. But anyway, that's the keyboard. It really is fun to type on it, and I recommend that if, if you do buy this keyboard, uh, get it in the blue switches. You won't regret it. And if you're a gamer, I would consider getting the red switches and you know so on and so forth. You know, Each switch is designed for a different type of user. So overall, if I was to give a grade for the typing experience, I'd give it an A-. It's not the best thing out there, obviously, and I know that even though I haven't really used the best of the best, but it's it's good. It's pretty pretty good for a $40 keyboard off of Amazon that I kind of took a chance on just saying, hey, you know, might as well try it. So overall, great typing experience. Uh, now I want to compare it to my previous keyboard, which is uh, the famous CM Storm Devastator uh, keyboard and mouse combo. This is the keyboard. Uh, and this is obviously from Cooler Master. So yeah, this is my previous keyboard. Um, and uh, I really liked it. I had, I've had a lot of fun using it. I gamed a lot on this. I don't really game much anymore. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is a keyboard more uh, designed for gamers. Uh, because uh, if you compare the uh, key travel on this and the key travel on this, they're the same, but obviously this requires more pressure for keystroke than this. I would say these keys on here are more comparable to reds. Not that they're the same, but you know, they don't require too much effort to push them. Uh, also, this keyboard is taller than this. This is more you know, flat against your desk. And if you put the kickstand, the kickstands up on these things, this is like at a really sharp angle. And I think this has to do with maybe this keyboard is more uh, designed for typists. As I've said, you know, if you get the MX Blue style switches, this might accommodate you while you're typing. I don't know, maybe. Um, but yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Um, also, this keyboard, if you're gonna compare design and build quality, although this looks nice, um, they, they both look nice. This just feels cheaper. This really screams, you know, plastic. This is gonna, you know, flex more on you. This is more solid, you know, you got metal in there. I doubt there's any metal in here, but um, yeah, this one feels a lot more sturdy solid, whereas this one feels, you know, more flexible and, you know, maybe prone to crack. Not that you're gonna crack it, but you know what I mean. Um, also, if you compare the backlights on these things, this one is dimmer, it's red, uh, and this one is just a hundred times better and more versatile um, because this one just has one setting. You just turn it on and off with the print 
uh, print screen button. This one, it's always on. You can adjust the brightness. You can have different effects, as I've said. You can have different profiles, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, there's a world of a difference between the backlighting and obviously this one is much better. And then, you know, you have the uh, media keys here. Oh, and I forgot to mention that. Um, if you compare these two, as I said, this is a 10 keyless keyboard, uh, which means that you are lacking any media keys, which kind of sucks, but after a while you get used to it. Um, all you have to do is press the function key and the corresponding media key, which is assigned to a function key. That's kind of a mouthful, but you'll get what I mean. There's like play, rewind, you know, volume up, volume down. All you have to do is press the function button and then press the corresponding uh, function media key. Um, so after a while it becomes natural, you'll get used to it, but yeah, that's something to think about. On this keyboard, you have uh, actual tangible media keys, so that's kind of a plus. Um, and also, um, you get a full numpad on here versus on here, there's none at all. Uh, and this is just more of a smaller profile keyboard, you know, so I, I personally like that. I don't particularly love how huge this is, but you know, having the numpad is a nice thing. So keep that in mind as well. So, you know, I hate to compare apples to apples. I mean, apples to oranges, these are both great keyboards. They're designed for different types of people. This is more for the gaming type of person. This is more for the typist type of person like me. You know, I'm, I use this for video editing, typing, not much of a gamer. Um, but if I'm going to compare these keyboards apples to apples, you know, on design, on, you know, features, etc., cetera, uh, this one wins. And it really does because A, it costs more and B, um, it just, offers or brings more things to the table such as the mx blue switches or mx red brown or black switches which you can get in here and the uh, superior backlighting and structural rigidity so yeah this is the better keyboard if you're thinking about this keyboard it's not a bad keyboard at all but um uh, if you're gonna spend a little more money i recommend you get this uh although this does come with a mouse so keep that in mind so overall this keyboard is a better keyboard but both are pretty dang nice so lastly, let's talk about my final thoughts on this product. Um, as I said, it has a decent build quality. It's not the best, it's not the worst. Uh, just smack dab in the middle adequate. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, especially for a keyboard that is $39 off of Amazon. Um, secondly, the typing experience is great. Um, I love it. It's been a joy to use, and I really recommend you buy this if you want to you know, step up your game and you know have a little more fun typing. Uh, number three, it is the better keyboard out of the two, you know, like I said, if you compare them between the CMS from Devastator and, you know, this Dravo keyboard. So overall, I really think it's a good product, uh, and you really get what you pay for, especially, you know, for a $40 keyboard uh, from this kind of, you know, mostly unknown company on Amazon. Um, uh, so with all the positives on this keyboard, there are just a few negatives that I want to share with you guys. Uh, number one, um, choose the switch that suits you best. The blue switches suit me best, but light blue switches, they're loud. They're very clicky, you know, listen to this. Um, and I've had people in my family complain about them at first when I first got this keyboard, you know, like, why is your keyboard so loud? You know, and I'm like, I don't know. I didn't expect them to be this loud. So yeah, they're gonna be clicky, they're gonna be loud. I personally don't mind it, but um, just keep that in mind. You know, maybe it's just this keyboard, maybe it's just blue switches, I don't know. But still, it's just something that irks me and irks my family just, a little bit. Number two, um, as I said, this is a 10 keyless keyboard and it did take a little bit to get used to pressing the function key and then the corresponding media key, which is assigned to an actual, you know, F key. So that's something that you're gonna have to sacrifice with this keyboard. It is 10 keyless. It is nice and compact, but yeah, you're gonna have to get used to that. It's not the worst thing, um, but yeah, it'll take a little time to get used to. Really no big deal. And lastly, number three, this keyboard out of the box does not play very nicely with OS X. I had to go into the settings, I had to change it to the modifier keys, because for some reason, Mac OS would not recognize the Windows key here as the command key. So that was fun trying to figure that out. And uh, so now I have Alt as uh, command, I have the command key or the Windows key as option, and everything else is just normal. So it works for me, it works just fine to be honest. I think it works better because, uh, you know, on my MacBook, um, I'm used to having the command key right next to the space key. So, you know, it all works out in the end. All these negatives that I just told you are fixable and you can, you know, get used to them. So it's not like some big uh, detrimental quality. So, you know, those are just three little things that irk me about this keyboard. And it was at that moment my audio went to hell. Some awful humming noise started and I couldn't bear to include that in the video. So I'm going to continue what I was saying. 
Uh, this is a great viable first choice if you're looking for a budget mechanical keyboard. I highly recommend it and I'll leave a link in the video description if you're interested in purchasing it. And uh, I hope this video helped you out. I certainly had a lot of fun making it. It was long, it was detailed, and I hope that I didn't uh, extend it too long. I just really wanted to cover all that there really was to say on this keyboard. Uh, so I really appreciate it if you leave a like on the video, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe for more content like this. With that said, other than that, I will catch you all in the next one. Bye now.